Hello again, everybody. Today, I'm going to be doing another simulation video. This time, we're going to be doing eight years, and I made a team here of all 82 overall players. So basically, they are all average, and I guess that totally fits the average Joes as well. So this team can definitely be reused. But yeah, I made them all top six, top four, and medium starter, respectively. And obviously, yeah, the forward and defense are medium as well. But I just wanted to see how this team would perform in the league and how they would grow as well. So interestingly, I did this with a team full of 84s and they destroyed. Like they actually finished, I think, top five in the league somehow and made the playoffs. And I was like, well, that this just isn't going to work clearly because I must have created the players in some way that they are insane, but their overall is low. And as you guys have seen before, that's pretty easy to do with the offensive and defensive awareness. If those stats aren't high, then it really affects the overall. So you can crank up the other stats and you could have like a team of 70 something overalls that can win the cup. But yeah, I also sort of started to run out of names for people, um, but I just tried to give some names as you can see there. And as a full team of 82 overalls, you can see they're actually starting off not bad here. I expected it to be worse. And Another interesting fact is that when I made the 84 team, the team's overall was 88. So I think that has to do with the offensive and defensive awareness. And then when I made the team 82 overall and sort of adjusted the stats a bit, the offensive, defensive awareness, stuff like that, etc., they actually dropped to an 82 overall team. So yeah, they were the actual average of the team, which obviously is 82 because every single player is 82. Anyways, Mark Scheifele is going to win the Art Ross this year with 103 points, and we got the Boston Bruins winning the Stanley Cup for year number one. Go through the trophies here quickly, and I know that our coach actually ended up stealing a couple trophies here. I can't quite recall if there was any players that ended up winning trophies, but I guess we're going to find out together, because I just get the gameplay, edit it all together, and sort of just, I, I have no script. I'm just going off the top here, all right? I have nothing to go off of. It's probably pretty obvious a lot of the time. Because I'm stumbling, but, you know, it is what it is. I kind of find it more natural, should we say. And, yeah, I just kind of think of the first thing that comes to my mind, which often causes my stumbles, actually, in a video. Too many things will come to my mind at once, as you'll probably see in my Be a Pros. And, yeah, it just creates a mess sometimes, but that's me. It's what you get. <laughs> anyway, the team is growing at a different pace, as you can see there. And they're doing all right again this year. We will once again look at the trade deadline just to have a look at players on the block as we do. Team would make the playoffs this year with fifth. They got 38 wins and they made the playoffs, which is huge. Kurt Dangle leading the team with 62 points. So that's actually kind of impressive. And we got Scott Sterling and Joe Schmo here still pretty much splitting the starting duties. And overall, their stats are both pretty solid, I must say. Nate Mack is running away with the Art Ross this year. Gets 106 points. So hats off to him. We got the Florida Panthers with the Stanley Cup this time around. Spencer Knight really cleaning up. He simulates really well. And as you can see, our coach there, P. Shore, taking home the Jack Adams. Love that for him. Here's the team again. And yeah, the chemistry, there actually is a way to get pretty good chemistry with this team. And I found that out, I believe it was after this year. Uh, I think this year I ended up doing it, but just didn't record it. So yeah, that's a thing. But I think it's like one three three one in the offense, which is really nice. And just looking here to see if any potentials changed, but the answer is no, they did not. Joe Schmo is now up to 86. Scott Sterling at 84. They're both still medium starters, so they have not budged as well. The team had a bit of a rough start here, but they would end up bringing it back around and to the deadline here again, just to see who is on the block. Pasternak. Pasta. I know it's Pasternak, by the way. I know. All right. Regardless, but he's past the knack because he goes by past anyways we have the average joes not making the playoffs so they didn't really have a great year but they also didn't do terrible they weren't last or anything you know so it's not like they had a miserable season but just not as successful as the previous one the team will get a decent performance from their goaltenders here 905 and 909 respectively Hattie Kane with 122 points. I should have made that one of the players, actually. I made Johnny Toes. I should have made Hattie Kane. Regardless, Tampa Bay going to win the Stanley Cup this time around. Is this the time there was back-to-back -back Jack Adams? No, it was not. All right, well, I, I don't know if it is back-to-back, -back, actually. We're going to learn today. 
So maybe there's three trophies. I haven't even really been fully paying attention, so it might have already happened. But yeah, and as you can see, Happy Gilmore hurting a little bit here. 78 for some reason, but we do have a bunch of 84s, 83s, etc. The defense seemed to be growing at a very similar rate, regardless of ice time. Goalies are both now 84. We no longer have an 86 overall goaltender because last season obviously was not ideal. And the team here still looking pretty good. I mean, it, they don't have any superstars by any means, but they do have depth and some good quality players. So I think actually this is the year where I found the good line combination and didn't end up having it recorded. But they come out of the gate very strong there. On the trading block, we got Quinton Byfield, which I was kind of shocked about at uh, the age of 21. But yeah, that would be a huge pickup for anybody there who is looking for an asset such as him. Team finishes fourth in the central with 94 points. We got Sid the Kid with 73 points. We'll be tying Tino Manny. Love that. I guess I should have made Tino Manny the goalie, eh? I don't know why it feels weird to say A in a video. Do I normally say it? I guess you guys are probably know more than I do. I barely even listen. I just listen for the cuts in the video. But yeah, I don't know. Let me know. I'm curious now. Spencer Knight gets the most wins with 47. Barkov will tie with Kutra for the Art Ross. Both getting 105. 60 goals from Barkov too. What a year. Florida going to win the Stanley Cup here. Here's the individual trophies. Jack Adams this year? Yeah, there it is. We got another Jack Adams under our belt. The team would be eliminated in round one by the Winnipeg Jets, taking six games. So, yeah, they didn't really put up too much of a fight, but they also didn't go down extremely easy. I decided to start showing some of the retiring players here because why not? No players with 1,000 points. Yuck. Just kidding. You could get one point in the NHL. You're a legend. So showing the lineup here again, the team is growing very slowly, almost, I want to say, stunted here. There's not a whole lot of change going on in the upward direction, but the team has a relatively decent season here. As you can see, they're doing all right coming into the trade deadline. Klingberg and Carlson both on the block for San Jose. So clearly they're trying to get rid of some defensemen, Anthony Mantha as well. The team would finish fourth in the central with 84 points and 39 wins, so... They are pretty good at sneaking in, it appears. Kurt Dangle with the most points on the team there, getting 64. And the goalies did decent again this year. They didn't do too bad. Sterling did not have the best record, that's for sure. But, um, yeah, I still had some okay stats. Uh, we got Shesterkin leading the league for wins in terms of goaltenders. And then Connor McDavid will get the Art Ross with 113 points. Chicago will take home the Stanley Cup. Jack Adams? It's like the only thing we win, I think. No, not this time. We might have actually seen both of them. I'm not sure. Jumbo Joe, retiring at the young age of 45, getting 1,748 points. What a beautician. There's the amazing chemistry again with the team with the 1-3-3-1. I couldn't get a 5. I'm not even sure how you really do that, to be honest. So I might have to look into that a little bit. But yeah, the team came out flying this year. 16-7-2. Show the... Deadline once more here. The Nuge is on the block. Angval and yeah, a few other great players here. I've sort of noticed too that it goes by overall, or so it seems anyway. Um, that's just something I kind of picked up on there. It's probably common knowledge, but Cal Naughton Jr. leading the league this year. If you understand that reference, then great. Um, if not, then Talladega Nights. It's a very decent movie. Di Pietro leading the league. And we have... Sebastian Aho with an Art Ross taking home 107 points in that trophy. Not bad. Not bad at all. Oh, we did get another Jack Adams. Let's go. The team would be deleted by the Golden Knights in round one, taking six games. And when we look at the retiring players, we've got Sidney the Kidney with 1,776 points. Very decent career. Very decent indeed. Team chemistry still looking good. We have an 88 and an 87 player there, so we are starting to see a little bit more growth. An 86 overall goaltender will make the return, which is great to see, and somehow they're not doing lovely. I don't get it. I really don't. They had a better overall than last year, and they're doing worse, but it's, I don't know, the simulation engine in this game, very hit and miss. The team will miss the playoffs getting 89 points and 39 wins this season. Cal Naughton Jr. going to be tied with Kurt Dangle. With 66 points, which would lead the team. The goaltenders did very well here. 31, 21, and 9. 8, 11, and 2, but had a 9, 12, and 289. So pretty solid. 
Katahat with 48 wins will be the leader by quite a margin there, actually. Patrick Laine gets 108. He will win the Art Ross this time around. And Tampa Bay taking home the Stanley Cup. Let's have another look at the trophies here. And who else but Katahat to clean up the goaltender awards. Here is the playoff tree. Burnaby obviously did not qualify this time around. Bergeron will be the top retiring player with 1,433 points. What a career from that man. Now, have a look at the lines here. The team, we have a couple, no, a few 88s actually. There's three of them. Um, Kurt Dangles in 86, McGavin 85. So yeah, clearly some of these players are excelling and some are not. But overall, they are starting to form a pretty cohesive unit, shall we say. And we'll have a look at the trade deadline here again. There's always some very good players. Bowen Byram's on there. Interesting. The team finished fourth in the league this time with 103 points, 49 wins this year. Jackie Moon led the league with, or not the league, no. 70 points will not do that. That's not going to happen. He did lead the team, though, with 70 points. The goalies did pretty good again here. Demko going to lead the league in wins with 43. We got Dreisaitl with 128 points, an absolute dominating season from him. The Broad Street Bullies, Philadelphia Flyers, will take home the Stanley Cup this time around. And Scott Stalling is going to be a trophy holder. That's unbelievable. The team was deleted by the Winnipeg Jets in six games here, which was unfortunately the final season. So they had some good runs, but they never really found success in the playoffs, unfortunately. And obviously a lot of the players now are locked to exact potential. In fact, I believe they all should be based on the fact that they are going to be um, older than 26 which is when that occurs, I believe. I'm pretty sure that's the age. Anyway, it's kind of going through some of the stats here to have a look at how the players perform throughout the entire eight years and also looking at some playoff stats because haven't really looked at that before. So yeah, just kind of going through a few players, not really all of them, but just a couple here and there. So yeah, that's going to do it for this one. I just... Wanted to see what would happen if we put this team in there and basically had them play the entirety of their contract, which in this is a maximum of eight. So yeah, we had them for the entire run here and it was pretty interesting to see some of the players grow, some of the players, I guess, not grow and actually get even worse, which was not super surprising considering, you know, obviously some players are going to have to be on the third and fourth line, might not get a lot of ice time and that will do some damage but overall I would say it was pretty interesting and quite successful they did not win a Stanley Cup in fact they did not really even have a deep playoff run but they did have some seasonal success so that's about it